Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning with First English Baptist Church. It's so good to see everyone here. And uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. Uh, thank you for <laughs> your labors of love for all of us. We, we wouldn't be here without you, would we? So thank you, thank you. Uh, actually, in that spirit, it's, this is a good, a, a good day for this special offering. When you leave the church, in the back today, there's a basket for a, a voluntary offering to the nonprofit Dwell, which is an organization in our county, in Columbia Montour, that helps families and children who have uh, broken homes, um, kids that need uh, adoption or, or foster care, and also their, their foster families. Um, they fill a tremendous need and uh, mission in our community, and we've helped them on several occasions. You know we took an offering uh, earlier in the year for toys that will be given out at Christmas time. Well, they have asked churches this month in May to make some special offerings. We would like to contribute, and if you're interested in doing so, please leave a gift in the basket back there. There. They're asking for specific things, and what our church is going to do is, is buy gift cards with the funds that we raise, which uh, help adoptive families, foster families. They have so many things to juggle all at once that Dwell tries to help with uh, support and care, and that's what these gift cards will do. There's also um, a hope chest uh, room at the Wesley United Methodist Church Annie and I visited and it's beautifully organized with all sorts of uh, clothing and toys and supplies for kids all different ages they also try to they, they not only help the children who are in foster care but their children in the rest the rest of the children in the family so that everyone feels included parents as well it's a great organization. If you have uh, some, some loose change or, or would like to contribute, there will be a basket in the back for that today. Um, and for Anna, I would like to read this. Uh, thank you for Anna Kashner. Thank you all. Thank you to all who enjoyed last Sunday's concert, Strawberry Ridge. A special thanks to those who made it happen. Bob and Ann Van Houten, RJ Crawford, Mary Clapp, Mark Sweeney, Ken, and Karen Yerges, and of course, Anna, too. So thank you very much. I heard it was a, a very successful event, and I hope we have it happening here again. And Emily has an announcement for us. Doris. And Doris. Emily and Doris. What? Good morning. Good morning. Saturday, June the 3rd, is our community meal at Wesley United Methodist Church. Uh, we, Phil and Hannah, has graciously donated the turkeys for our dinner, or breakfast, dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so we need our Baptist bakers that are very good uh, to donate cookies, cakes, pies, whatever you want to bake. And we need workers. And the sign up for workers is 9 to 11 and 11 to 1. So please sign up and join us. We have a great time. And it's fun. That'll be in the back, right? For people. To yes, back. it'll be in the back. On that table back there. Okay, it's a great event. It, it is. is. And people very much appreciate the fellowship and the food. Yeah, so. yeah. especially the food. Especially <laughs> the food. Yeah. So we're thank have you. A great turkey dinner. That's what yes. we're serving. So it's yes. going to be really good. Thank you for organizing it. Very, very good. I also want to comment on yesterday. We had a very special. Uh, prayer breakfast every second Saturday of the month. We have prayer breakfast downstairs. We don't pray the whole time, and you're not on your knees, so, you know, it's, it's actually a fellowship event, and we, we sign cards that go out to many of the people that you have requested prayers for. Um, we have a, a nice 
little breakfast together, and usually there's a speaker. And um, yesterday our guest was uh, brought to us by Doris, and this was from the Geisinger Hospice. Um, and all of us, I believe, who were there learned something about hospice that we did not know. So much so that I'm going to try to arrange for them to come on a Sunday morning because the information they have to offer, I'm sure, will help every single family in this room. If you're not personally in need of hospice care, someone you know will be if they're not right now. And it's absolutely astounding, the services and the support that are available to people towards the end of life uh, that we need to know about and inform our friends and family members. So um, thank you, Doris, for arranging that. That was just a superb experience. So I hope you, in the future, when you see prayer breakfast, you'll think about coming. It's at 8.30, and you know that's at least not 6.30. Um, so it, the sun is up then, and um, yeah, people move around at 8.30, so... <laughs> Right, Jim? <laughs> so, uh, you're welcome to come. I hope you will. Not Steve. We know, we know Steve is on a different time zone. So, okay. Thank you. Would you stand with me as we begin worship? Thanks to God and our mothers, we have breath. We breathe unconsciously most of the time thankfully, so we can do other things. But when we can't breathe, that's all we think about. Thank the Lord for the air that we breathe and for the spiritual air that we breathe in Jesus Christ. So we'll take a moment to think about a breath, to calm ourselves. Let this be a, a breath of, of inspiration, of hope, of love, of forgiveness, of grace, of strength, of courage, of faithfulness, of kindness. And as you release that breath, imagine releasing to God those things that you, you carry that are burdens, hurts, sorrows, anxieties, disappointments, failures, pains. Allow them to release to God. And then we'll join together in a prayer of invocation and move into our worship. Thank you for being here this morning. And a little exhale and one deep breath of life. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, thank you for that breath. For the breath that you give us every moment that we live, it is your breath. We thank you for this new day, for the sun that is up, for the plants and animals of creation all around us. We thank you for this sacred space and for our friends and neighbors and family members here with us. Please bless this hour of worship, of prayer, of song, of scripture with your presence. Guide our thoughts and encourage us in those places where we need hope and spiritual strength. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here this morning. Hear us now in a moment of silent prayer as we come together before your throne of grace. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher, and he shall lift you up. Higher and higher, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing together as the deer.
you. Please be seated. Now is our opportunity for prayer together, and if you have particular folks you're, you're praying for or situations you'd like us to share with you in your prayers, we'd be happy to do that. Raise your hand, I'll call on you, first names are fine, and I'll repeat them so everyone can hear. Jim. Joe, Kathy, Jacob, and myself. Joe, Kathy, Jacob, and Jim. Christy. Fred and Jeff. Fred and Jeff. Eileen. Baby Jack, Baby Royce, Baby Royce Sally, Sally, and Greg. And Greg. Janet, Charles. Charles, yes, and Larry, and, Larry. and Janet, Larry. <laughs> Phil, all, my friends and family. all your friends and family. That's the whole world, Phil. <laughs> Everybody in Bloomsburg knows Philip Gray. <laughs> Joe, my mom. your mother. Angie, the Steele family, the Steel family. Annie. I'm sorry, Annie. Danny, and ben. ben, Kenny, Kenny. Patsy. Patsy, and Nick, and Nick. thank you, Rosie, Edna, Peggy, Connie, Jamie. Edna, Peggy, Connie, and Jamie. Doris. Claire. Claire. And Matthew. I'm sorry, the second one was Nancy, Nancy and Matthew. Marcy. Scott, Mike, and Dennis. Scott, Mike, and Dennis. Jan. Scott and Julie. Scott and Julie. Camille and George. Camille and George. Donna. Christine. Christine. Kyle. 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 Coy. Marie. Marie. Stephanie. Stephanie. And Nicole. And Nicole. Karen, Nancy. Nancy, RJ, Darlene and RJ, 
Emily. Bob and Jean. Bob and Jean and Matt. Thank you. Thelma. Jamie and Addison. Jamie and Addison. Anne. Joe and Kathy. Joe and Kathy. Sam. Sam. And Sue. And Sue. Carolyn. Uh, Barb. Barb. Madison. Madison. Uh, the Rosetta family. The Rosetta family. And Donna. And Donna. Dave. Bill and Judy, Ted, Ted Mike, Mike, Mark, Mark Charlene, Charlene, and my sisters. And your sisters. Yes. Annie. Jean and Bob. Jean and Bob. Yes, thank you. Esther. Sue, Sue, Sue and Julia. Thank you very much. Would you bow with me as we remember these folks and others in our prayers this morning? Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this wondrous world you create in every moment and for the privilege of being here and being your people. You have heard the names that we have said aloud. You know the ones that are unspoken but also on our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord, especially for these loved ones. We don't know their particular circumstances or situation, but you do, and we pray that in your mercy, your wisdom, your power, and your love, you would grant to them what they need on this day, the spiritual resources, as well as the physical care and support and healing, the social structure of, of support and care that is so important to all of us, and those unspoken and perhaps even unknown needs that surround all of us. We pray, O oh Lord, that in your wisdom, you would grant to us that which would make us whole and healthy, that would deepen our faith and our commitment and our trust, and that you would allow us to fulfill the mission and the purpose for which we are here. We thank you for our church family, for those with us today, those with us in spirit, and we ask that your spirit among us as we have sung this morning, come spirit, come, that your spirit among us would continue to give us the spiritual resources, the support and care and love and direction that we need. We thank you for the gift of prayer, of fellowship, of support and care. And we pray that your word of love and hope goes out from here, from us, through our words and our actions to touch the world for Jesus' sake and in his name. We pray, O oh Lord, for distant people and places today, those we hear about on news and read about, perhaps, that are in great distress from weather events, <clears throat> from war, from uh, the vagaries of life that strike all of us, but especially those who have so little resources at the, their disposal to to cope with tragedy and hardship and disease and uh, destructive forces around them. We pray, O oh Lord, for your spirit to move among all of us to bring more hope, more healing, more connection, more grace, more love. We thank you that your spirit equips us to do these things even when we feel we can't. And we thank you for that promise and that assurance. Hear us now, O oh Lord, as we remember together in prayer the words you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. 
Would you stand with me as we sing together, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Thank you. Please be seated. And would you join me as we gather together and worship our tithes and our gifts?
Heavenly Father, we bow in gratitude and thanksgiving, recognizing that everything we have, all that we are, are gifts from your hands. Please receive what we've brought this morning and use it for your work in your kingdom, but also receive us, all that we have, all that we are, living offerings to your kingdom and your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Our scripture this morning is from the fourth gospel, the gospel according to John. The last chapter, we continue from last Sunday where we were also in the last chapter. If you recall, uh, Peter and other disciples, six other disciples, had decided to go out to fish in the Galilee and they fished by night and caught nothing. A stranger on the shore greets them and asks them to cast their net on the right side of the boat where they will find fish. And sure enough, a huge catch is hauled in. The beloved disciple says to Peter, it is the Lord. And Peter jumps in the water, runs, wades, swims, bounces to shore. And the others follow. Jesus has prepared breakfast for them, grilled fish and bread. They eat together in a way that echoes the Lord's Supper, and a professor in seminary called it the first breakfast, which I thought was very clever, the first breakfast after the Last Supper. Now we continue in that moment. Hear the word of the Lord. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, <clears throat> you dressed yourself and went where you wanted but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. May God bless the hearing and the living of this word. Amen. He is one of the very first disciples to say yes to Jesus' call, follow me. He's named first in every gospel list that we have of the 12 apostles. Of those 12, he is one of the inner three, including the sons of Zebedee, James and John, whom Jesus calls to accompany him at very crucial moments in his ministry, at the top of the Mount of Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah appeared to him and in the Garden of Gethsemane the night of his betrayal when he prays to God. He is consistently the spokesperson for the Twelve. He's the first one of them to speak aloud that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. He alone jumps out of the fishing boat in a roiling storm and walks across the water to Jesus at his bidding. According to John, he's the first one to inspect the tomb that is empty on Resurrection Day. Luke and Paul report that he is the first one to see the risen Jesus. Of all the earliest apostles, 
of Jesus. This man holds a place like no other person. There is simply no one else like Simon Peter. It's not surprising then to find Simon Peter so prominently featured in this epilogue to the Gospel of John, chapter 21. In fact, Peter has the main supporting role here beside Jesus. That role would seem extremely logical, but only if one fails to remember what happened between them previously on the night of Jesus' arrest and torture. When soldiers arrived that night in the olive grove to take Jesus into custody, the disciples scatter. Simon Peter, however, must not go too far away because later we find him warming himself by the fire in the cold night air outside of the building where Jesus is being held. A servant girl near the door asks Peter if he is one of Jesus' disciples. I am not, he answers. A little bit later, someone says to him, Surely you are another of his disciples. Again, he denies it. I am not, he says. And then later, someone who was there with the soldiers in the Garden of Gethsemane notices that Peter looks familiar. Didn't I see you with him in that garden? Man, you did not says Peter, and then the rooster crows. Peter had promised never to deny Jesus. But in a single night, he denies Jesus three times. Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, Peter, the spokesperson for the other eleven, Peter, favored by Jesus with extra responsibility, extra trust, extra instruction of all people, Jesus' closest ally cannot admit to even knowing him. And the next day, Jesus is crucified. Imagine the guilt and remorse that weigh upon Simon Peter. He may think that his denials sealed Jesus' fate and guaranteed a premature end to his ministry. He may fear he'll never see Jesus again. He may think he is unforgivable. You recall from last Sunday that Peter, Simon Peter, is the first one out of the boat to greet Jesus, the risen Jesus, who's grilling fish on a fire on the shore. Maybe his zeal for Jesus overpowers his shame. Maybe he wants to ask Jesus' forgiveness before the others arrive. What follows is, in fact, the ending of the Gospel of John. And it is one of the most intimate, personal exchanges in all of Scripture. Peter and Jesus have a private conversation that Jesus initiates. Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these others? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replies, feed my sheep. Perhaps there's an intervening conversation about other things, or perhaps there's only a shared silence. A second time, Jesus asks, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? more than these. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, he replies. And Jesus says, tend my sheep. Maybe there's another long pause. 
Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. The narrator tells us that at the third asking of the same question, Peter's distressed, hurt, because Jesus appears not to believe him. My sheep, Jesus says in John chapter 10, know my voice, and they come to me. I protect them from those who would hurt or steal them. I lay down my life to keep them safe. His sheep are Jesus' greatest love and responsibility. Clearly, sheep are a metaphor for Jesus' disciples, of whom he is the shepherd, the pastor. But soon he will be physically absent. He has, in fact, already laid down his life for them. But now, now they need another shepherd, another pastor in his absence. Someone to continue to watch over the flock, to keep it from danger, to provide good pasture and clean water, to prevent thieves from stealing them away, perhaps even to lay down his or her life to save them. Pastoring is a dangerous, life-threatening job, apparently. And Jesus has has chosen Simon Peter to do it. The one who folded under pressure gets a second chance to demonstrate his love for Jesus. But why the same question asked three times? Is it to match and erase uh, Peter's denial of Jesus three times? Perhaps. Does Jesus simply need extra reassurance given Peter's great failure in the past? I doubt it. Because Jesus' reply never changes. From the first asking to the last, Jesus gives the same commission with the same level of conviction and trust. Even Peter's last reply implies an exasperation in knowing that he can offer no more reassurance to Jesus than Jesus already has. Lord, you know all things. What can I tell you? You know already that I love you. And yes, Jesus does already know. So why the repetition? Maybe it's for us. Maybe it is for us, for you and me, to really drive home three points. One point being, love overwhelms failure. Love surpasses failure. Peter really does love Jesus. His failure that awful night was a lapse, a falling short, a perfect example of sin, which literally means missing the mark. Peter missed the mark that night, but his love for Jesus remains intact, strong, and lasting. Just as Peter confesses, Jesus does know all things. So he knows Peter's heart. He knows Peter's commitment to him. Love surpasses failure. Second, love entails responsibility. Love entails responsibility. Peter's love for Jesus carries a very specific duty 
to shepherd, to pastor the disciples in Jesus' absence. Jesus emphasizes the provider role of the pastor, making sure the sheep have food, nourishing them. It mirrors what Jesus just did on the beach, prepare and give his disciples breakfast. But probably even more to the point, it is spiritual feeding that Peter worked to ensure that the disciples are not led astray from Jesus by destructive forces or powers, that they not consume deceits, distractions, lies, false directions, that which is not true, nutritious, spiritual food. Today we're bombarded with such spiritual deceits, distractions, and junk food. There are countless spiritual poisons in our contemporary world. Attitudes, habits, beliefs, behaviors, which diminish the spirit, injure other people, and fracture homes, families, neighborhoods, and nations. Now more than ever, Christians need to be shepherded into good spiritual pasture, where the Spirit of Christ can flourish and grow stronger within us. Love surpasses failure. Love entails responsibility. And love empowers the weak. The fact that Jesus chooses Peter, the very one who failed Jesus so miserably that night, demonstrates God's power to work with and through any of us who are also failure prone. Worthiness is not a prerequisite for service. Humility is. As Paul once wrote, when I am weak, then I am strong. Three times, Paul says he prayed that God remove his weakness. He calls it his thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was specifically. Some unnamed liability in his life that gave him grief his entire life. And God does not remove it but instead leaves Paul to live with it, saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect, complete, in weakness. Three times, Jesus affirms that weak Peter is his choice to lead his flock. Three times, Jesus tells Peter that his love entails responsibility, even unto death. And Peter does die for that flock. Three times, Jesus reminds Peter and us that love in our hearts is greater than failure in our lives. Yes, we will fail. But our love for Christ and his love for us overcome these failures. We can be forgiven and move on. And Peter himself is the proof. Follow me, Jesus says again to Peter. Follow me, Jesus says to us. Would you bow with me for a prayer? Gracious Lord, we thank you for the candid picture of Peter, one so much like ourselves who can profess great intentions and often display them and sometimes at moments completely fail. Help us, Lord, to be inspired by the love of Jesus for these men and women who are not perfect 
but they are willing. They are willing to serve and humble enough to accept love and forgiveness and move into their mission with hope and conviction. Help us to do the same, Lord. We thank you for the faithfulness of Simon Peter, the other 11, the women and men who are unnamed but were also faithful disciples. We are their legacy. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to all of us. Help us follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing softly and tenderly? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.